Hey there. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I created this awesome alarm clock dashboard. It's more than just an alarm. It's your personal wake-up assistant. With this dashboard, you can set an alarm time and choose how you want to wake up. Want to hear your voice assistant greet you? Done. Prefer to start the day with your favorite YouTube video playing on your TV? No problem. Need the lights on or even your coffee machine brewing? You can do all of that with just a few taps. And don't worry, it might look complex, but it's actually super simple to set up. So let's dive in and see how it's done. Let me break down how this alarm clock works. It's divided into three main parts. First, there's the display screen. Here, you can see the current time, the alarm time, and whether the alarm is turned on or off. Next, we have the setup buttons. These let you adjust the alarm time by increasing or decreasing the hours and minutes. You can also toggle between AM and PM. Finally, at the bottom, there are the action buttons. This is where the magic happens. You can choose what actions the alarm will trigger, like a voice announcement, playing a YouTube video on the TV, turning on a light, or even starting the coffee machine. And to top it all off, there's a main switch that lets you easily turn the alarm on or off. All right, let's get started. The first step is to upload the images we'll need. To do this, I'll open the file editor and click on the folder icon at the top. Then I'll scroll down and open the www folder. If you don't see a www folder, you'll need to create one. This folder is essential because it allows us to store and access image files. After creating the folder, make sure to restart Home Assistant so it recognizes the new folder. Inside the www folder, I'll create a new folder specifically for this project. I'll name it Alarm and then open it. Next, I'll upload the images. To do that, I click the Upload button at the top. I've already prepared a folder with all the images we'll need, and I'll link it in the description so you can easily download them. Now I'll upload all the files. To save time, I'll speed this part up in the video. And that's it, the images are uploaded. Now let's move on to the next step, which is creating the helpers. These helpers will store the status of the action buttons, letting us know which ones are active, and they'll also keep track of the alarm time. Don't worry if it sounds a bit confusing right now, it'll make more sense as we go along. To create the helpers, I'll go to Settings, then to Devices and Services, and click on the Helpers tab. From there, I'll hit the Create Helper button. First, I'll select the Date and Time Helper. I'll name this one Alarm Time and set it to Time Only, as this will store the time the alarm is set to go off. I'll click Create, and now I can see that the helper has been created along with its details. Next, I'll create another helper, but this time it will be a drop-down. I'll name it AMPM and add two options, AM and PM. This helper will store whether the alarm is set for AM or PM. I hit Create, and it's done. Now, let's create a template sensor. I'll name this one Formatted Time and input a state template. I'll leave the template code in the video description so you can easily copy and paste it. In the preview, I can already see the alarm time formatted nicely. I'll click Submit and Finish, and that's done. I'll create another template sensor and name it Current Time. This one will store the formatted current time. Again, I'll insert the template code and check the preview to confirm everything looks good. Once it's set, I'll hit Submit and Finish. Next, I'll create a toggle helper and name it Alarm On. This helper will store whether the alarm is turned on or off. I hit Create, and it's ready to go. Finally, I'll need helpers for each action button, one for the voice assistant, one for playing YouTube on the TV, one for turning on the light, and another for the coffee machine. I create these the same way, using toggle helpers to store the status of each action. And that's it. I now have all the helpers I need to make this alarm clock dashboard work seamlessly. The next step is to create some scripts that will bring everything to life. Don't worry. I'll leave all the script details in the description so you can easily copy and paste them. To get started, I'll go to Settings, then to Automations and Scenes, and click on the Scripts tab. From there, I'll hit the Create Script button. Once I'm in the script editor, 
I'll click on the three dots in the top right corner and select Edit in YAML from the menu. This is where I'll paste the script to make the increment hour button work. After pasting the code, I'll click Save Script and keep the default name. Then I'll hit the Rename button. Next, I'll create another script, this one for decrement hour. I'll follow the same process. Go to the menu in the top right, choose Edit in YAML, paste the script, save it, and rename it. I'll repeat this process three more times to create scripts for increment minutes, decrement minutes, toggle AM, PM. Each script is added using the same method, editing in YAML, pasting the script, saving it. And with that, we now have all the scripts we need for the core functionality of the alarm clock dashboard. Now let's start building the alarm clock. To begin, I'll go to the dashboard screen and click the edit button at the top right. It's the pencil icon. Then I'll click the plus icon to add a new view. In the view pop-up, I'll select panel mode and name it alarm clock. I'll also pick an alarm clock icon for the view. Once that's set, I'll hit save. Next, I'll click the add card button and scroll down until I find the picture elements card. I'll select it. In the picture elements configuration pop-up, I'll start by deleting the default state badge since we won't be needing it. Then in the card options, I'll insert the URL for the base image of the alarm clock. This image is one of the files I uploaded to the www folder earlier. Remember, when inserting the path, replace www with local. Once I add the path, the alarm clock image appears in the preview pane. It's looking great. I'll hit save to check how it looks on the dashboard. Perfect. Now it's time to start adding the buttons. I'll go back to edit mode and add an image element by selecting it from the dropdown. I'll set the entity to increment hour and name it the same. For the tap behavior, I'll choose toggle, and for the hold behavior, I'll set it to nothing. Next, I'll insert the path to the button image in the state image box. Since this button is for incrementing hours, it'll only ever be in the off state, so I'll use that setting. The button now appears in the preview, but it's too big and out of position. I'll adjust its size and position using the style box. That looks much better. For the other buttons, I'll duplicate the first one to save time. I'll change the entity to decrement hour, give it the same name, update the image path, and adjust its size and position in the style box. I'll repeat these steps for the other alarm buttons. Increment minutes, decrement minutes, and toggle AM, PM. Now the buttons are working, but we can't see their effects just yet because there's nothing displayed on the alarm clock screen. That's what I'm going to set up next. Next, I'll add the current time display. To do this, I'll select a state label element from the dropdown and choose the current time entity. I can already see it in the preview, but I need to adjust its position and size. Before doing that, I'll set both the tap and hold behaviors to nothing since I don't want any interactions for this element. Now in the style box, I'll enter the settings for the position, size, and text formatting. One important detail here, the text size is configured to stay proportional no matter what device you're using, whether it's a PC, tablet, or phone. In the preview, it might look out of proportion, but don't worry, on the dashboard, it will appear perfectly. Let's save it and take a look. Perfect, it's exactly where I want it to be. Now, let's add the alarm time display. To do that, I'll duplicate the state label I just created and change the entity to formatted time. Then I'll adjust the style for this text. Again, it might look wrong in the preview, but it's perfectly positioned on the dashboard. Next, let's add the action buttons. I'll start by duplicating one of the existing image elements. Then I'll change the entity to alarm voice on, insert the image paths for the on and off states into the state image box, and adjust the style for the correct position. Oh, I forgot to rename it. Let me fix that. Now I'll duplicate this button to create the YouTube on TV button. I'll select the alarm YouTube on entity, enter the paths for the on and off images, and set the style. Next, I'll duplicate again to create the alarm on button. I'll select the alarm on entity, insert the image paths, and adjust the style settings. I also want to display whether the alarm is on or off directly on the screen. For that, I'll duplicate one of the existing state label elements, change the entity to alarm on, 
and adjust the style to fit it correctly on the screen. Finally, I'll create the remaining action buttons for the light and the coffee machine, following the same steps. Duplicating an existing button, changing the entity, updating the image paths, and setting the style. Once that's done, I'll save everything. And there it is, our alarm clock is fully functional. I can now set the hours and minutes, toggle between AM and PM, and activate the action buttons for the voice assistant, YouTube on TV, lights, and coffee machine. Now, there's just one final step to complete the project. Now it's time to make the alarm clock trigger actions when the set time is reached. To do that, I'll create an automation. First, I'll go to Settings, then to Automations and Scenes, and click the Create Automation button. From there, I'll select Create New Automation. Setting up the trigger. For the trigger, I'll choose the Time and Location type and then select Time. In the time configuration, I'll choose value of a date time helper, time entity, or timestamp class sensor. Then, in the entity field, I'll select alarm time, which is the helper I created earlier, to store the alarm clock's time. Adding a condition next, I want the alarm to trigger only if it's turned on. For that, I'll add a state condition. I'll choose alarm on as the entity and set the state to on. Creating the actions. Now I need to define what happens when the alarm goes off. I'll do this using if-then building blocks to check which action buttons are enabled. First action, voice announcement for the first block, I'll add a state condition and select alarm voice on as the entity with the state set to on. Then I'll add an action, choose assist satellite and set it to announce. I'll select my voice assistant as the entity and write a message to be announced. If you wanna know more about the home assistant voice assistant, check out the video I made about it. I'll leave the link in the description. Second action, YouTube on TV. For the next if then block, I'll add a state condition for the entity alarm YouTube on with the state set to on. Then I'll add an action, select other actions and choose perform action. I'll link it to a script I've already set up to turn on the TV and play a YouTube video. If you're curious about automating your TV, I've got a video for that too. It's called five great TV automations for your TV. I'll leave the link below. Third action, turn on light. Next, I'll create another if-then block. This time I'll check if alarm light on is enabled by adding a state condition with the state set to on. For the action, I'll select switch, then turn on, and choose the bedroom light as the entity. Fourth action, turn on coffee machine. Finally, I'll add one more if-then block to check if alarm coffee machine on is enabled. I'll add a state condition for alarm coffee machine on with the state set to on and then choose a switch action to turn on the coffee machine. Once I've added all the actions, I'll save the automation and name it alarm clock. And that's it. Let's test it out and see how it works. When the set alarm time is reached, the enabled actions will trigger exactly as planned. Whether it's a voice announcement, playing a YouTube video, turning on the bedroom light, or starting the coffee machine, it all works perfectly. And there you have it. We've successfully built an alarm clock dashboard that not only shows the time, but also lets us customize how we wake up. Whether it's with a voice announcement, a YouTube video on the TV, turning on the lights, or even starting the coffee machine. It's simple, functional, and really adds a personal touch to your smart home. I hope you found this video helpful and inspiring. If you enjoyed it and want to see more DIY smart home projects like this, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. It really helps support my work and keeps me motivated to bring you more content like this. Also, let me know in the comments what features you'd add to this alarm clock, or if you have any ideas for future projects. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.